Hello and welcome to the Bride Tender Podcast. I'm your host, Esty Gordon Levin, and I'm here to tend to the brides like I tend to the bar. So mix yourself a cocktail and let's get ready to discuss all things weddings. Today I'm here with Rolando Roblero, who is a New York stylist and menswear designer with Alton Lane, and we're here to talk all about kind of the groom today, which is a little different. That's a relief. It's a little, <laughs> it's a little different for this yeah. podcast, but you know, we got to give like the grooms some love. So here we are, we're talking about the grooms, we're talking about, you know, menswear, what's in, what's, what's fresh, and I want your take on what that is. Yeah. So first, thank you so much for coming on the podcast today and making some time for me and like literally turning this into a film studio. Which, That's nice. <laughs> it looks awesome in here. So tell me a little bit, like, how how did you get into styling? Ooh, I love that question. <laughs> uh, We're so artists here on this podcast. I am as well. Yeah, I'm <laughs> glad to hear it. Uh, well, I moved to New York from San Francisco 11 years ago, and I didn't know how to dress at all. And I was told that by a former <laughs> colleague. He's like, look at this guy. He doesn't want to dress himself. I didn't know what he meant. I'm like, eh, I have clothes on. What are you talking about? He meant style myself. And uh, I moved to New York to do stand-up comedy, you know, which I still do. And I just was wearing, you know, jeans and, you know, tennis shoes and pretty, you know, T-shirts and stuff. And uh, I just felt like I wanted to stand apart from my other comedians who were all dressed similarly, you know, rock and roll T-shirts and all yeah. that stuff. So I bought a blazer from a thrift store in Brooklyn for $15. It's ridiculous. It had an English tag, and I thought, this must be quality. It had a little English <laughs> tag on it. Didn't realize that it fit me terribly. But at the time, <laughs> you know, it, it was like the first place, so I felt real fancy. And then I just, it just snowballed into, I bought a, a jacket from Macy's. My second jacket was a, a you know, $200 Macy's black blazer thing. And then uh, my third was a $1,500 custom suit from a different suiting company. And, uh, and I thought I needed to just shoot high mm -hmm. and then uh, and now I'm everywhere and that's it. I mean, I love a bargain, you know, so I love when I can go into a place, even like a thrift store and find something very unique. So mm. I really appreciate that story because mm. nothing sounds better than like a 15 blazer, $15 blazer to get you started. You right? got to start somewhere. You do. You got to start somewhere. I mean, you know, you start with what you can get at the time. And uh, if you can buy a $20 sweater, you can buy a $20 blazer. Definitely. So, you know, you could have the sweaters and the blazers. I feel like too many, a lot of people are like, oh, I gotta, why are you so dressed up? I don't do that every day, you know? <laughs> you can do all of them. You can, you can dress however you want each day of the week. Yeah, no, it doesn't have to be the same look every day. That exactly. would also be crazy. Like if you were in a ball gown one day and then you're in it every day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good point. Yeah, tuxedo every day. Every yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, now, how has everything been going for you? I, I ask this to a lot of people who come on during the pandemic, because I feel like even though the pandemic has been craziness, we've just seen such a spike in everything with weddings. Yeah. How has it felt here at Alton Lane? Well, I came on Alton Lane early 2021. So wow. pandemic was like high, but it wasn't 2020 high, you know, aggressively yeah. worrisome and, and people were freaking out. Weddings were still kind of soft. I mean, a lot of uh, uh, venues were getting moved around. So there were a lot of like, um, uh, you know, they would postpone the, the, the creation of whatever they were getting for the groom. Uh, and then have to rush to get it because uh, they found a venue yeah. that could only do a certain date. So it was a little bit of that funk. Um, but overall, you know, the company I was with, Charles Terrett, prior to this, um, you know, 2020 was just the middle of 2020. Obviously, probably for everybody, it was just blank. Yeah. You know, we were just all at home in, in sweatpants. Um, <laughs> most of us, some of us, either sweatpants or scrubs. I feel like it was only two yeah, outfits. Yeah, those are the only were two outfits. Um, but now, you know, there's a huge rush last year, um, August, uh, 2021. Uh, um, and now it's, I feel like that was the peak. Like everybody yeah. got their weddings in that they couldn't in 2020. 
and now it's it's you know lulling a little bit and it'll go back up and, mm -hmm. and we might become normal in in two years or so <laughs> not I me know, right? but <laughs> yeah no, in me general, either. The, right. um i feel like there's been so many trends especially now i feel like a lot of people are like willing to kind of branch out into color right mm. like i'm seeing a little bit more of that you know in menswear and women's wear for weddings mm. like what are some trends that you see right now? Um, really aggressive jackets and the rest of the outfits plain. You know, yeah. it's almost like jackets have become the template for um, your personality. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, it used to be the necktie in the, in the 90s. You know, it was like you're a fisherman, you get a fisherman's necktie, you know, <laughs> and everybody's like, hey, nice tie, Bob. And but now it's like, I mean, I don't see a lot of blazers with, with fish on them, but uh, it's become like, you know, who would wear pink pants? You might wear a pink jacket. So it's the jacket that's become the testing ground right. for, for how, how far, you, how, how willing you are to, to be adventurous. Yeah. Now, I see a lot of like, I see now like a big trend in like with men's tuxes is, they're wearing like almost like the shorter pants and the shoes with no socks. Yeah, that's unfortunate, yeah. Oh my God, I hate it. Yeah, we all do. Oh, I thought I was the only one who hated no, it. So no. I was like, oh, when, when, when we got married, I told my husband, absolutely not. Yeah. So that's gonna be a no for me. Yeah, it depends the color of the tux. I mean, if the tux is blue, I think you can get away with it a little easier. Black's formal color. Yeah. You know, so black without socks is... I'm hoping that trend like, like, is over or like going look away. if you don't want to wear socks uh it's probably because of the venue i mean if you're going to like a really uh you know an estate and you're not wearing socks you're you're you know That's you belong so right. in the garden essentially <laughs> That's uh, so true. but you know if you're at a beach or something maybe you pull it off right but if you're at a beach you shouldn't be wearing a full-on black tuxedo it's too much yeah you it's gotta, totally different look different yeah. vibe so if you're doing the slipper thing uh, then maybe consider like like we were talking about the jackets like an, a cool like uh, soft color on the jacket black pants uh, and then you could do the slipper because the slipper the casual nature of the slipper matches the casual nature of the jacket don't be yeah. formal from the, the 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 longest hair on your head to your ankle bone and then all of a sudden it's free free uh, game you know what I'm saying <laughs> <laughs> it's like come on yes. yeah but, but do it properly you know like. Uh, when I say properly, I don't mean like you're, you're not necessarily breaking rule. Nobody's going to scold you. But like in photos, you ever look back at yourself? Yeah. We all do. We look back at ourselves 15 years ago. And we're like, oh, my pants are ridiculous. Right. And blah, what blah, was blah. I thinking? Your yeah. wedding date, presumably you're going to be married to this person for more than 10 years, depending on your age, you know, yeah. for a God long willing. time. God willing, sure. you'll be married forever, right? <laughs> that's the goal. You know, that's the promise. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and if that's the case, when you're looking at your, your pictures, your videos, you don't want to feel like you were following all the other folks who were doing that yeah. thing that that guy did on that one show that mm -hmm. one time, you know, yeah. just do it, do it right. I know when it came to my wedding day, I was like, I want my look to be like classic that when I look back, I'm not like, oh my God, what was I thinking with my makeup or my hair or my dress or my shoes? Like I wanted it to be where I look back and be like, you know what? I was timeless and elegant. Yeah, like, definitely. And I feel like, well, I feel like everybody should think that way, but like they don't, you know? Well, <laughs> I think part of that is like the less guys are um, uh, comfortable wearing formal wear, the more they feel like uh, stiff when they do it. Yeah. So it's going from Lululemon, whatever you're wearing, uh, to a full on proper tuxedo is, is like a, almost like, um, I don't know, a confidence yeah. punch a little bit. Cause oh. once you're wearing a tuxedo, your movement, um, becomes the focus, you know, how you move in the tuxedo. You ever see somebody in a, in a suit and they're like walking like oh, the robot, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It doesn't, you're not really wearing the suit well. The, right. the suit's on your body and it's, it's on your shoulders, yeah. but it's not, you're not wearing well, it well. nothing drives yeah. me crazier than I mean, just working in weddings with seeing couples, whether it's a bride or a groom, um, wearing something that doesn't fit them well. Mm. Because it's like, 
that is something that can be changed. It's something that with the right person guiding you can be right. You know, it's like you have to try on different things in order to see what looks good on your body. Every body is different. Sure. So, and there's so many times that I see where it's just like, even whether like it's on a man, like the suit doesn't like fit or like the tuxedo doesn't fit like just quite right. Or it's like swimming on them. Yeah. I, you know, the issue there is like who determines if it fits well. Right. If it's not, if you're not, if you don't know it doesn't fit well on you, you're not going to know what to fix to right. make it fit well. Uh, and that's the stylist's responsibility. Uh, which is why, and this is a pet peeve of mine, is is you stay with one stylist. You don't. We're not. It's not Macy's. You you you, you don't just go in and pick something up and then wear it and call yeah. it a day. This is a relationship with your stylist. You don't. When you buy something with one stylist, you keep it going. You keep that relationship yeah. going, because you know in the future you might say, oh, that thing you made me a year ago. I noticed that it's a little this, it's a little that. I wish it was shorter. I wish this and that. And that's the relationship. That's how your clothes fit well over time. It's not just, we're not, it's not a, a, a machine, you yeah. know, this is a living relationship. And, um, you know, the, the, the amazing fit, we try to stay away from the word perfect because that's like, you, you'd be chasing that like a dragon. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we'll be chasing that, that forever, Don't, right? Yeah, just, just well and comfortable, those two, well and comfortable. Um, but, you know, that takes time. It takes time to to know what you like. You know, you yeah. might like a longer jacket one year and then a shorter jacket another year. So yeah, and it's kind of like even talking about trends. Like they do change, just like your style evolves over time. Mm. I yeah. mean, and thank God because if I was still going by where I we was, would all, we would all look terrible. Yeah, I had <laughs> I had these American Apparel disco pants, and for any of my friends watching this, they'll know what I'm talking about. I was obsessed with them. Yeah. Like, I literally thought they were my best look ever. And yeah. my mom hated them. And she let me know it every single time I wore them. And I feel like they did what they needed to do at the time. But now, like, now at 30, I'm like, I've retired the disco pants. Like, a couple years ago. Sure. But what I did was they have like, to, What did they do? Oh, they Are just... they big? They, like no, no. They were like... Super tight spandex, high waisted gotcha. pants with a button and zipper. Yeah, they were and, my going out pants. See, that's you know? the thing. So you know, they weren't I mean, my wedding pants. You know, no. <laughs> but the, you know, if they come back, if you didn't get rid of them, then you're on trend again. Yeah, true. So my thing is, I actually am really good at getting rid of things, but I couldn't fully get rid of my disco pants because, mm. like, they have sentimental value. They did. They they were good to me for a bunch of years. Yeah. Even though you know everybody else in my life didn't like them, mm -hmm. I loved them. Yeah. You know what's great? <laughs> so you know my wife Kelsey loves Sex and the City, and I know I've seen every episode and <laughs> with her, some without her, but most with her. And uh, you know what Carrie Bradshaw does, Sarah Jessica Parker. She just she like it almost looks like every outfit is just like something she grabbed from her closet from some time in the past. Yeah. Put together and it works. And it's almost like that's what, what makes her influential. Not because she looks like every magazine cover, because that's it yeah. wouldn't be influential. It would be something no. you've seen a bunch of times already. Yeah. But it's that she grabbed the disco pants and the new top that she just got yesterday and paired these two and things with a together. decade in between them. <laughs> and, yeah. and that's what gives the punch. I know. My favorite, Guys can do the same thing. My favorite outfit of hers was like, like that tool skirt and I'm just like I love like a tool skirt obviously it's for a very specific thing that you might attend but it's it was so iconic mm -hmm. you know and I feel like on your wedding day you want like your look to be like iconic but also you don't want to like look back on it and then be like what was I thinking mm -hmm. you know um, and I feel like in today's times, speaking on like the bridal dress side, like we see so much lace and very form fitting where in a couple of years from now, we'll probably see things that are totally different. And what are those things? Are we, are we, is, are we supposed know. to forecast them? I know. See, I, w I wish I had like a crystal ball because I would love to know. But yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I what do like... you think the trends are going to be in like menswear? Like, what do you think is next? Um, you know, 
I, I feel like both solid color flats and um, textures. Maybe not, mm. not overlapping. I think not a solid color texture, but solid color flat and uh, a textured fabric. Like textured tuxedos, I think are underrated. Um, you know, they, texture usually doesn't shine and you would like your tuxedo to be not completely matte. Just right. because it's, I don't know, it's not, um, it doesn't reflect. It doesn't, it doesn't, sh it, you're not a star, you know, you're yeah. just kind of a guy in a, in a I like, looks like a suit. I like when the groom wears something a little bit different than the groomsmen, but like something where he can like stick out, but it still goes with the like color scheme and theme of mm. your wedding. Like, I mean, my wedding, for example, were like dark, like dark green was like the color of my wedding, like dark greens with mixtures of like gold. So nice. my like bridesmaids were in like a, like an emerald green velvet. And it, we had the groomsmen in like a, like an emerald green tuxedo. Full on, pants full, were green. Full on, yeah. Yeah, cool. I know everybody probably thought I was crazy, but I'm like, it fits the colors and it looked so good. Yeah. And even my, my little ring bearer was in like, uh, in like a dark green, like tuxedo. And he just like, it looks so good. And then I had my husband in, um, a tuxedo where it was black pants and like the white, white dinner jacket yeah, with the yeah. black lapels. Like an ivory. Yeah. An ivory. Right, yeah. yeah. I thought that it was kind of, nice because it was different mm. um just to like have him like stand apart but not be in like just the typical all black tux mm -hmm. um but also i and and you could tell me what you think about this like i feel like the suspenders are really in right now opposed to wearing the vest underneath true yeah the vest is um first of all you know the, when you wear a tuxedo the vest has to be a low cut kind of horseshoe shape vest cannot be a suit vest with a tuxedo. You're yeah. not supposed to see the vest when the tuxedo jacket is on and buttoned. The vest should be a afterthought, when your jacket is off. Oh, that's interesting. I feel like pe a lot of people don't get that right. A lot of people don't know that, yeah. And yeah. a lot of companies don't make uh, custom tuxedo cut vests, which I mm. think more should. Yeah. Um, now they probably don't because the vest isn't as high demand. As, right. So I understand why they don't, but they, you know, it's, they would sell them. Uh, the suspender, I wear suspenders with suits all the time. I never wear a belt with a suit. I used to, it's just the belts are cumbersome and heavy yeah. and they're too utilitarian for uh, how, you know, how, how kind of, how do I say it? How comfortable a suit should be. Right. Uh, so, you know, suspender with a tuxedo fits perfectly. Uh, I would avoid silk. Uh, silk is, you get it dirty, it's, it's, it's mm. wicked hard to clean, dry cleaners won't do it. Um, especially white silk suspender, forget it. There's no stretch, Ew. there's no, there's, yeah, it's terrible. Um, you get an elastic, either 100% elastic or like a cotton elastic blend. Um, white or black is fine, button closure, don't, don't do the clip on, it's, you know, <laughs> it's like you do that if you're 14 and getting married, but yeah. not when you're 35. Uh, and, uh, but you know, keep in mind that when you wear um, the suspenders, its primary purpose is um, to, for comfort. It's for ease yeah. of uh, the day, you know? Mm -hmm. Last thing you wanna do is pull up your, what if you get a picture of yourself, <laughs> pull it up your pants, so you no. look ridiculous. Yeah. So just do yourself a favor and let your shoulders hold your pants up for you. Yeah, and I think it's also like good for posture, I feel like too. I feel like it like just looks nice. I yeah, your like, shirt stays tucked in sometimes mm -hmm. a little better because like you can have a wider waistband because your waist isn't holding up your pants, your shoulders are. Yeah. Um, and when you have a belt, you gotta like kind of cinch it tight, which is a good reason to get a custom belt because it's, you could adjustable length. Right. Adjustable length is crucial, otherwise you're stuck to the little holes. <laughs> but say, you know, one hole is too, uh, too big and the other is too small, you either eat a lot eat less <laughs> or, <laughs> yes. or, you know, you just got to tighten it up. And once you tighten it up, the shirt, you know, you lift your arms and the shirt comes with your body 
you put your arms down because it's tied around your waist. Now you get this pillow. You get this ridiculous, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, mushroom. Yeah. Uh, so the a suspenders, muffin top. Muffin top. <laughs> so the suspenders help with uh, with that. I think too many guys think that. Too many people think that suspenders are like associated with fat guys, which I think is ridiculous. I, I think yeah, it's, that's so weird. It's very useful for yeah. guys with bigger stomachs because, like, you know, the belt and it doesn't. You know, the pants sit up higher, nice, nicely. So, yeah. but it, it's not like exclusive to bigger guys. It's just, it's a way to hold your pants up. That's it. It's a way to hold your pants up yeah. and wear, wear for it. Yeah, and it's <laughs> elegant looking. It is, it is elegant looking. And I just think it's just like also fresher looking than like the vest. Like I just feel like, and I'm sure in a couple years we'll see the vest back. I hope and so. the, instead of like the, you know, um, the suspenders and it will be just a different look. Well, you never do instead of, you would do no, as you do well both. as. Yeah, because oh. the suspenders are considered underwear. Mm. So you don't um, you don't want to show your suspenders. That's why when you button your jacket, yeah, no one will, know, no you're one will know you're wearing them. You'll know, you pop them open and stuff. Um, but you know, it's like a corset, because corset's considered underwear. You know, right. When you, when you wear true. it out, it's now kind of trendy. Same thing like suspenders. Um, uh, but you know, the suspenders would be basically behind the vet. You wouldn't see the suspenders at all. Got it. They would got still it. have the function of your pants being up and not falling and blah, blah, blah. Mm. Um, but you know, the vest as well is a nice little touch. The, you either do vest or cummerbund, those two things. The cummerbund yeah. is like the, you know, the I know. crumb I, catcher, they call I, it, going around <laughs> your waist. I, I had to wear one of those when I was in like chorus in high school. Really? Yeah. So it's been, it's been a minute since I've had to wear one, but I don't see those often now. Not at Not all. Not a thing. No, really. that's the thing. Like, you know, if, you, if you're introducing a cummerbund to your tuxedo, uh, do the wingtip collar, do the patent leather shoes, do the whole, I love the, the whole patent shebang, leather you shoes. know? Yeah. Yeah. I would steer away from them if you're not doing the cummerbund thing, mm -hmm. only because the same thing like we were talking about earlier with the sockless tuxedo. Right. Is like, you're going like kind of classic around your waist and then the mm -hmm. rest is modern. It, it <laughs> yeah. Just, just it go with a the theme. Go with the exactly. theme. Exactly. No, I agree with you. What are your thoughts with the ties? Like a regular, you know, a regular tie, a bow tie. What do you think? If the if the lapel of the jacket is satin, bow tie, never necktie. A necktie is meant to cover the front placket of the shirt where the buttons are. Um, but with a tuxedo, the tuxedo shirt options are covered front with the buttons hidden by a piece of fabric, which so is white flat, flat front, or studs. Either one should yeah. not be covered. Therefore, right. do not wear a necktie that covers it. Mm. You know? Yeah, no, bow that tie. makes sense. I love a bow tie. I'm like, Preferably bow tie learn how to or tie bust. It. Yeah. Yeah, bow tie or bust. Like, bow, bow tie, tie or, nothing? or bust. Yeah. Like, I just, like, I know. I know this makes me sound like kind of crazy, but like, you know, when you work in the wedding industry, you want to see things a certain way. So, like, I told my husband, I was like, this is like what I want you to wear, you know? Yeah. And luckily, like, he's pretty easygoing. So he was like, okay. He wore the green? No, he wore the white dinner jacket with, right. the, with the black lapel and black bow tie, um, white shirt, and uh, black pants, black shoes. And the groomsmen wore the green? Groomsmen wore the dark That's green. That's interesting. Yeah. I know. You don't see that very often, a color for the groomsmen and yeah. the black and white for the I know. I had to do it different, you know? Yeah, yeah. Couldn't be like everybody else. Yeah. About the bow tie, you know, preferably do the self. Do, do tie it yourself. Don't do the pre-tie bow tie. It comes packaged flat, and it just looks yeah. like you're wearing a piece of, uh, like somebody printed a bow tie on a piece of paper and just like stuck it to your neck. Get the get the tie. Learn how to tie it. You know, if you can watch four seasons of whatever you're watching, you can, <laughs> you can learn how to tie a, YouTube a bow tie video in, on it. in an hour. You know, <laughs> figure it out. Um, and also, don't you know, when you tie a bow tie, uh, when you when you buy the the version that you tie yourself. Uh, you select the size of your neck on the bow tie. Select oh. that size. You got to measure your neck, do it, select the right size. I made the mistake and I learned my lesson of uh, thinking that if you select a bigger size than your neck, your bow tie will be bigger. The, the tie itself will oh. be larger. It doesn't it happen. It just sinks and falls. <laughs> not, not a yeah. good look. No. So when it comes to like getting something custom for yourself for your wedding day as the groom. How long in advance should someone come in? Love, I know. I love this. I love this question. I hate when people do things like rushed 
Yeah. And I feel like a lot of people do. Well, y too many people do. Or they're too, they, you know, they're booking things so far out and it's like, I don't know, I got to see you in two years. So let's see yeah. what you look like. <laughs> Give yourself time. Yeah. I mean, I say six months. Okay. That's a nice amount of time to, um, you might change your mind on what you want, um, which is, I'm not saying it's that's bad. If you change your mind, it's yeah. like, okay, you have a tuxedo for future events and you'll have time to get something else. Right. For, you know, uh, a remake, if there's an error, factory error, stylist error, uh, you have time for that. You have plenty of time for alterations. It's like the, the last thing you want to do is put that extra time that you could have got it in the beginning. Um, don't put it at the end before your wedding. Like put it yeah. in the beginning. Like, you know, do it early so that, that that month, two months or whatever from the time you get the garment to your wedding day, it's you're doing a lot of other things at that time. The last thing you want to do is come in for a fitting and worry about if it's right and yeah. just do it early. Get out of the way. You know, minimum two months. Okay. Maximum a year. I think that's, that's a long time. A yeah. Time. Yeah. I feel like six months is like a very like normal and decent time frame, especially when people are typically booking their weddings around a year out. Some people a year and a half, some people two years. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know how, but like, I'm yeah. like, yeah, no. <laughs> also just keep in mind, like, so like, you know, when you buy chicken in a, at a store or whatever, I imagine, I don't know if you're buying chicken on the street, <laughs> I guess it depends on where you are. Um, you know, it comes in like a little package, you know, but it used to have feathers. It used to be squawking around and living its life and doing its thing. Same thing with your suit, okay? It used to be a sheep, okay? It used to, now the sheep had to be sheared and it had to be made into fabric and it had to right. be shipped to so-and-so and, -so and cut and sewn and all of these things. That takes time. Unless yeah. you're buying, you're, unless you're walking into an H&M Buying a tuxedo for $15 and wearing that to your wedding, you need to give yourself time because these things are, it takes time, it takes time. to cut a piece of fat. It takes time. Keep that in mind. It's, and, not, it's magic. And I'm sure that, uh, I'm sure you'll relate to this, is people also need to understand that when you do things without giving enough time, there's rush fees. There's a lot more money lot tacked of. on. And stress. And stress. And stress. Yeah. For me as well. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. For both, all of us. All of us. Just save yeah. yourself the hassle. Definitely save yourself the hassle. Do things in enough time. And I feel like for our grooms out there who uh, like to take their time, six months is a really good time frame when you're probably engaged for a year. You got a, a six yeah. month time lapse to sit back and not do that much. So. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, if you're like. <laughs> If you're like, oh, I'm just so busy doing these things. It's like you're too busy to get the clothes that you're going to wear for this day that your, your yeah. bride-to-be is probably like thinking about every single yeah. day. Take a take two, three hours. I can't, I can't tell you the amounts of stories that I hear of all these couples that are, that are, are too busy. Too busy. Um, and I'm like, we all have jobs. We all have things. We all get married. We all, you know, so, you know what? Plan your time better and make sure that, you know, this is the way that you're going to get the products that you want. Yes. And, and, and fit the way you and want it to fit. Look the way you want it to look. Yeah. Um, you know, and you're spending how much on videographers, photographers, mm -hmm. and then every picture you're like, you're it's all weird here yeah. and because you didn't have enough time to do it properly. Absolutely. Absolutely. I feel like um, for all the money that people spend on their weddings, it's like you want to make sure that you do it right. It's true. It's, a, it's an expensive day, but it should be the best day of your life. In theory. Well, yeah. <laughs> it depends what happens the day of. Yeah. In theory. You know, yeah, yeah. Uh, like, you know, take that with a grain yeah. of salt. I'm not at every single person's wedding, but. <laughs> yeah. I don't hear I don't very often, but it's, it's happened. <laughs> I'm sure oh of it. <laughs> um, what did I want to ask you? I wanted, oh, so, you, you know, before this, we spoke about how, like, you got married during the pandemic. I also got married during the pandemic. Like, 
um, I love to hear from wedding professionals like about their wedding day because it's funny how like every wedding pro's day like looks totally different. A wedding. Every wedding professional's oh, like gotcha, wedding day gotcha. like always looks different. You know, you have some who like go all out like balls to the wall like on their day, and then you have some who are like. No, no, no. I eloped because I like absolutely like didn't want to deal with like the headache. Um, so it was just like me and my partner and that's it. And everybody's kind of got a different story about their wedding day and like what that was like. And I'd obviously love to hear from you what your wedding day was like and what you wore, you know, like. Well, funny you should ask. We need all the tea, you know? Uh, yeah. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait to, <laughs> to provide it. Um, so, you know, my wife's from New Zealand. You know, she was born in LA, but she grew up in New Zealand and her family's in New Zealand. So. Uh, they couldn't come to America during that time because right. Jacinda Ardern had locked the country down. They couldn't leave. Wow. So my family's in San Francisco, California, and they could have come, but there's no way we would have had a, a, our wedding with my family there. It's, yeah. And not hers. That's, that, that wouldn't have happened. <clears throat> so we, um, we decided to do a um, city hall, New York City city hall wedding, and then do a bigger wedding in uh, Montenegro. Nice. Uh, and so... Uh, we're having our wedding party uh, a year, it'll be a year in September, uh, where our families will meet for the first time. So those first two weddings were just us, just us two. And some friends for the city hall wedding, but the Montenegro was just us. Um, the city hall wedding, uh, you know, she wore a sky blue double-breasted um, suit and, with a gold corset. Ooh. Which I, th I thought was very cool, very ahead of its time. Because, very cool. Yeah, they uh, now the baby blue suit is like getting popular. It's, yeah. She wore it last year. I know. She uh, was the trend so you know. starter. She definitely, definitely. <laughs> uh, and the the corset she got like a metal, you know, it was an official corset. It wasn't wow. like a fashion. It was a real corset, and it was tight and it was hard. It was interesting. Uh, I found a lining that I liked. I rarely do this. I found a lining that I liked and I found the fabric to match the lining as opposed to the other way around. Usually you find the fabric that you like and you think about the outside. I thought about the inside first. The lining was, um, this. I love monkeys. I've been studying monkeys. I read about monkeys. I know <laughs> so much about apes and primates. And this is so different than where I saw this going. But. Really, yeah. <laughs> I just, I love them. So if my stand-ups, a lot of it's about primates and the human primate and all this stuff. And so I found this lining that I needed just all of these monkey faces, photographs of monkeys doing funny faces. And I thought I need this lining so bad. So I was, like, I was just looking through fabric to find a fabric. I found this um, linen blend, this uh, linen wool silk blend, uh, now a tan to go with the, with the tan of the, the lining. Uh, casual patch pockets, you know, belt loops, because I said I never do belt, but it was like very casual suit. Yeah. Um, unlined a little bit, like just partially unlined to get some airflow. And I did the wool silk linen as opposed to 100% linen uh, because 100% linen wrinkles like immediately. And it adds this casualness that I didn't want for the wedding. I wanted a little formality, uh, but I didn't want 100% wool formality. So I did the blend um, and the silk adds a little sheen to it um, and the wool stops it from wrinkling so much. So that was the uh, city hall one. We got pictures, I wore, um, Paul Evans, um, double monk strap, uh, brown boots, which I'm a huge fan of boots and suits, man, boots and suits. Uh, and um, it, was, it was cool, you know, it was great. We, we had a great time. Uh, Montenegro, I wore a double-breasted black tuxedo, full-on black tuxedo. And I got the shoes, Crockett and Jones makes these shoes called the, um, the Camberleys or Chamberleys, I think Camberley. Uh, they're the shoes that James Bond wore in uh, Spectre. Ooh. And uh, they're double monk strap, uh, black uh, leather boots, you know, like, but they're different. Like the, the, the straps are, if you don't know, monk straps are just like, just buckled boots. They're originally um, like workman shoes. So uh, you just didn't have time to tie, you, your, your, your laces would break. And so for people who worked hard, they just wore these, these strapped shoes. Um, and so, uh, but uh, Crockett and Jones makes these ones that are like really sexy and really high. And so I wore those and uh, we just got married in this, I, I call it like uh, the most hip Game of Thrones town I've ever been. <laughs> That's where we got married. It was like 700 year old stone town uh, filled with cats. Like cats were everywhere. My wife loves cats. She has a tattoo of a cat on her wrist. And uh, there's this great photo that we have um, 
that was taken by the, our photographer there uh, of a cat on her, the train of her dress. <laughs> and um, in, in the city is in the background and it was incredible. And uh, for the party that we're having in a couple of months where our family's gonna meet because they couldn't, you know, like yeah. for, for the weddings, uh, I'm gonna wear a um, Skabal image. Uh, image is the name of the, 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 they call it a bunch. Whenever you have a, a book in menswear and they have, you know, a bunch of fabric in it, it's called a bunch. And um, it's from the image bunch and image is known for like really reflective fabric. That's and it's, cool. uh, it's, a, it's a navy um, or midnight blue, um, just single-breasted shawl collar, tuxedo, white bow tie, wingtip collar, and uh, the James Crockett and Jones, which I got to tell you something about the James. This is the, <laughs> this is the funniest and the worst thing in the world. Um, so these, this Crockett and Jones make these, makes these two whole cut, which is a style of shoe you should wear with a tuxedo. Whole cut Oxford, just no seam, one in the back, one seam in the back, flat, Simple, not shiny, just whole cut, regular leather shoe. Now, Crockett Jones makes two versions. The Alex, which is about $700, and the James, which is $1,200. And I was wondering what the difference was. I was in the shop in Soho, and uh, I put them both on, and I noticed the, the, ja the James was like so comfortable. <laughs> I was like, why is it so comfortable? He said, well, the cow is um, a little younger. And I thought, oh, it's a baby cow. Oh, wow. <laughs> he didn't say baby cow, but he said baby cow. He said baby cow. Um, but hopefully they ate it, I guess. I don't know. But um, I have the shoes, and they're great. Only one of 500. Well, that 500 is special. Pairs that were wow. Made. They were made to, in, in commemoration of the James Bond movies. Oh, my God. And the relationship between Crockett and Jones and the James Bond movies. And they're just so sexy and so, so comfortable. Are you guys doing your wedding here in New York City? Uh, yeah, we're gonna do the um, the party at um, um, oh shoot, I don't remember <laughs> the name of the place. We always it's the bride who always remembers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the Reigns Law Room um, at the William, I think. Okay. Yeah, the Reigns Law Room. It's basically just a small, really intimate, like a forty-person room. Nice. Yeah, my family's from New Zealand. My family's California. A bunch of friends. You know, 22 year old to 78 year old. So that range. It's gonna be pretty cool. <laughs> it'll be a good time. Yeah. And it'll be nice that you guys will have both of your families. And after just like such craziness with the pandemic and all like borders and everything being like on lockdown. You know, we have a photographer, um, uh, Jackie Obrecht. Obrecht. Uh, and she, um, we put a deposit down. And then we decided to get married in Montenegro. So now we have this photographer. We're like, what are we going to do? Should we just walk around New York City and get some pictures of us one day? And then we decided to have this party. And we're like, photographer, Perfect. party. Perfect, yeah. Party. I always say with like photography and videography, like you'll never have like regrets to have too many photos. Yeah. Like I, I never thought like I'd be the type to like document so many things in my life. But over the past like year and a half, like, you know, since like meeting like my now husband and like like getting engaged getting married now like being married like i feel like it's nice that we've done all these like little photo shoots in places that we've gone like even like on our honeymoon like we were in barbados and we did like some photo sh like a photo shoot over there and it's nice because you have like all you have at the end of the day after all of these events is the photos to look back on yeah, and the videos, videos to look back on. Yeah. What's so. your opinion on, um, I couldn't agree more. What's your opinion on the um, photos versus video if you, or if you can only do one? Mm, that's such a hard call. See, I'm like a big, I'm like a big believer you need both. Like I feel like for your wedding day, um, I feel like you're, you're never going to like, I feel like you regret not having the video, then you would regret having it, then paying for it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like a lot of people are like, well, I, I don't want to do video because like, I just like, I don't want to spend the money. And I'm like, it's the best money well spent because I know like in my family, we're really big on like these home videos that like we've had like growing up and my aunt and uncle, like when they got married, which is, like over 40 years ago they didn't really do videos at that time but my like my uncle like my mom's brother 
like videoed their wedding and it's funny because you could see mm. videography has come a very long way so it was kind of like poor quality but it's funny like i see in that like my my parents were younger at that time like they were they weren't even together but they both happened to be at that wedding um so mm. you kind of see them in the video and they're both like young and it's and yeah. it's funny and it's like before like they were even together and it's like had that video never existed i would have never seen that so you know it's funny you said that poor quality and you know it wasn't at the time no and no. that's probably what's going to happen now i mean it seems oh like yeah that's what always happens it's, i don't know how clear an image it, can get it's come a long way even over like the last five years Definitely. if you look at somebody's photography from their wedding five years ago and you look at it now you're like oh my god like depth and yeah all that. i mean the clarity like it's just so they um there's like i studied psychology in college and um there were these tests of like how what's the limit that you can identify a face how blurry can a face be and you can still identify who it is hmm. and the and it's it could be next to nothing you could just look be looking at a bunch of splotches bill clinton <laughs> that's bill clinton and then the picture gets clear sure enough it's bill clinton same that's thing so like funny. those it, it, just because it's 40 years ago and it's kind of grainy you'll it's, sell now yeah. yeah i mean an image it, it's the communication in, in between like that moment and the future is essentially what all this stuff yeah. is, is the communication to the future. And, um, you know, the same thing like you were saying about, you know, uh, the money being spent. Two parts. One, uh, you know, will you buy the opportunity to experience that memory again? Right. Buy it. Yeah. Buy yeah. the opportunity mm -hmm. to experience that memory. I, I'm like, listen, I know my wedding day was like expensive. I'm sure... Well, no, not I'm sure. My husband, le the husband sure. couple <laughs> couple days leading up to the yeah. wedding was like, oh my God, like I just can't believe like how much money we're dropping. On the day of the wedding, he was like, I wouldn't have changed a thing. Thank God we did what we did and we got who we got because it made the whole experience. And then, you know, in the weeks after our wedding, like, you know, and now it's like six months past, you know, getting the photos, getting the video, getting the trailer. Like it's all oh, yeah, like yeah, it's yeah. can't wait to see it's it. It's exciting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's actually sad now because like now we're literally at the end. There's nothing after. Oh, well, yeah, not yeah. to be like there's nothing after this. Of course, there's like a whole, li a whole life with my husband, sure, yeah. <laughs> you know, but I'm like, yeah. I'm like, we got the video. We got all of our photos. Like, how else am I going to relive this day now? Like, it's literally over now. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, That's why I told him we had to plan a vacation. <laughs> Good. Yeah. And then get the photos for, those, yeah, for that trip. I'm like, oh, my God. I'm like, I never thought I would feel like those, like, wedding blues that people talk about. Because I'm like, I work in the wedding world, so I'm doing this all day. But then when it comes to your day and you're like, now everything is done, everything is passed, and we have everything back. There's nothing we're waiting on. Yeah. Like it's, you know, and then I was like, oh my God, it's really sad. And every yeah. month as every month passes, I'm like, can you believe we've been married for one month, two months, three months, and this weekend it's six months. And I'm like, can you believe we've been married for six months? Like where did six months go? Yeah. So. You know, I feel like the, the time being married, I mean, it's been nine months for me now and uh, for us. And uh, that time is marked by like the names you call each other. Have you ever noticed like you used to call your husband something and then you even forgot what those names are. <laughs> it's like way in the past. You used to say this thing, you used to make a sound, you know, <laughs> and those are just long gone. And now it's some new thing. I like promised myself I would never be this like pet name person, you know, but now all of a sudden I'm like, honey, did you do this? Yeah, and I'm yeah, always, yeah. and I feel like I'm like, I became my mom overnight. <laughs> That's how you say it. <laughs> honey. Yeah. Honey. Yeah. Where is this? And yeah. that's just, <laughs> yeah. you know, and about the little, the, the name thing, like when guys um, buy their tuxedos or their suits or their wedding gear, um, they often have the option to monogram it somewhere. They yeah. put their initials or whatever. Eighty percent of people put their initials. You know, yeah. oh, just put AJP and just I don't want to think about it. But like, put the name that she calls you. Yeah, that's that's sweet. Do I make like that. Something of it. 
Yeah, you know? I like that. I think that that's like a really nice like sentimental touch. Yeah. And also when you're buying your, your wedding clothes and you're like, oh, it's a little too much. And the difference between what you want and what you're willing to spend is probably not astronomical. It's probably right. like 500 bucks, maybe a thousand, you know. Yeah. Just what I like to do, and this might be the salesperson in me a little bit, is, um, you know, take whatever that, that 500 bucks is, whatever that difference is between what, what you're, you might get and what you really want, and then divide it by months and then you'll get like $40 a month. Divide that by week and you spend, you, that's like a burrito. Right. It's just nothing. Just get what you want. Get what yeah, you want. What You're you going to have this thing for like 10, 15 years. Just do 100%. it. 100%. Yeah. No, I, I'm like a big believer in like investing in the right things. And I also feel like, you know, with a tuxedo, you have other opportunities to wear it, like to other functions that are black tie, like, my my dad wore the tuxedo that like he would I, I don't know how he was able to fit into it but he was very proud of himself um like a tux that he had i, I it was from so many years ago to my wedding like he was able mm -hmm. to do that and, and it looked good yeah it looked good i nice. mean classic black you know yeah great um but like we still all can't believe like how did you fit in like your tuxedo all these years like later mm -hmm. like i want to be saying the same thing that i like fit in my wedding dress all these years later you know yeah and we will, does... i will have no no uh, saying uh, <laughs> <laughs> like i'm just like Not i'm like point. i'm like that is so tough like yeah but yeah no and it like it goes a long way, you know, yeah. and it, it makes sense to make the investments that you know will go a long way. Yeah. I mean, do you feel that way about dresses? Because I, I feel like that the range of cost of dresses is way bigger. It's so, yeah, it's definitely way bigger. Yeah, so greater. when I went, so I was going to wear my mom's dress, like little backstory. So actually my dad's like grandparents were in the like wedding dress industry. Many, obviously we're talking like many, many, many years ago. Mm -hmm. So my grandma on my dad's side had the most gorgeous dress with like this real silk satin like bottom that mm -hmm. I just, like every time I saw a picture of it, I'm like that, I would have taken that dress and just like shortened the sleeves and worn it as is. That dress got ruined in a fire. So I never even saw that like in person. So I thought it'd be really nice to wear my mom's dress. And when I put it on, it was like, I could have made it whatever I wanted, but like, it was a little different than what I felt like was for me. And I felt like sad about that. Like I was just like, well now like, so I decided to go to a dress store in like local to me, I went to Blossom Brides. It's like one town over from where I live. And it's a very like one-on-one -on -one kind of service, which I like. I didn't want the experience where there were like 700 other brides around. I wanted like just by myself, me and my mom, me trying on all different styles. I tried on um, a bunch of different styles, but when I put on this one, it was um, Essence of Australia was the brand and it was all satin, um, very simple dress, classic, sweetheart, form-fitting, went out a bit with, um, with the really nice buttons all the way up the back. Mm. Just classic. I wanted an off the shoulder sleeve. Um, so I was in between two Essence of Australia dresses. The other one had an off the shoulder sleeve already there and was a little bit more form fitting. I had really liked that one. My mom loved the strapless one. I brought my dad back a week later. I'm like, I tried on both. I didn't tell him what my mom liked better. And I wanted to, I thought he was gonna agree with me. He loved what my mom chose. So I went with the strapless dress. I really like valued both their opinions. And I um, had my seamstress create an off the shoulder sleeve for me. Wow. And I couldn't find the fabric that like I wanted. I didn't want lace. I didn't want it to be just a satin strap that I found these flowers on Amazon. And she like created this like really nice thick huh. off the shoulder sleeve. That's kind of cool. And it was funny because, um, you know, like you and I have spoken about, I'm good friends with Lauren from Le Laurier and she was actually going to design the dress for me out of my mom's dress. And Whoa. I showed her photos of some dresses I tried on and she was like, Esty, I'm looking at you in this dress. Like, this is your dress. Like, go buy it. Like, this is your dress. Like, she's like, I could make it for you, but like, 
this is it. Like, this is it. Mm. And like, I'm like, when your friend who's a designer says that to you, you know, you have to go with it. Yeah. And she ended up turning my mom's dress into um, a bridal robe for me, which was very special. Yeah. And it was like silk. And then we used all the lace from the dress for the cuffs and like up the sleeve and like down this way. It was really so it was special because I was still able to use it. Mm. Um, but then I had my moment with like my own dress, like something different. That's it. I don't think we get much of that with uh, menswear, being able to no. recycle it like that. It's yeah. interesting that you can do that. Well, I'm a big fan of like, especially when you are spending so much money, like a wedding dress is very expensive. Um, I fortunately like found something that wasn't a crazy price. I think I spent like $1,300 on my dress, which in today's times, like people are spending 5,000 and 10,000 mm, yeah. and 30,000. And I'm like, here's 1,300. Um, but I did because of the time period with everything with COVID. And I decided to look for my dress after the summer because I had, you know, in this industry, like the craziest summer of my life last summer, just back to back to back to back, uh, weddings to work. So I bought it in September and my wedding was February, the following February. Mm. I did have to pay a rush fee. It does sound, for in the, in the bridal did. world, it yes, sounds like a rush I did, fee. I did have to. It still made it like, you know, listen, once you add in alterations and you add in all that, it becomes pricey, but it was still on like the way more affordable scale. Yeah. You know, with guys, it's, uh, you have to look at, um, photos on Pinterest or something, you know, like I, I suggest if you're not getting a black tux, you know, which by the way, if you're getting a black tux, there is a difference in cost of, of fabric. And just because it's black, they're not all the same. Yeah. Some of the, uh, more affordable fabrics may, uh, light may bounce off of them. And in your photos, you might look like you're wearing like a dark gray tux. Mm. So uh, a more expensive, like Skabal is very good with color. They have really rich, deep color. And they're actually, they, they supply all the fabric to the um, movie industry because it's for, for menswear. Um, I don't know if they do anything else, they might, uh, but they adopt light really well. So the, the harsh lights that they yeah. use, and it's, it's, it's better for that. Uh, but if you're not getting a really traditional tux like that, then what do you wear? So yeah. my suggestion is just, you know, if it's gonna be a suit, then just, uh, just type the color you like and the word suit and just scroll through and give those pictures to your stylist. You know? Yeah. Give them to your stylist, let them know, I'm looking for something like this and can you make it but with this change or can you make exactly this or do you have something like it but darker? You know, get, give some guidance, help us out, you know? And, and we'll, we can do a better job. And now um, with Alton Lane, what are like what are the hours here like do people make appointments to come in is that kind of how that works it's always appointment based yeah appointment because based. you know we don't i don't like overlapping appointments at all sometimes it happens if somebody shows up late and somebody shows up early right um now i don't like that though because you want 100 uh, percent of the attention you know yeah. it's it's you have a lot of questions and an hour seems like a, a long time on paper it's not when you're deciding on a lining and you're like i really like the monkeys but i'm not sure if i could do the monkeys <laughs> Um, or if it's going to clash with colors or whatever, you, you could be there. It could be in multiple appointments at that point, you know, and if you live in Jersey or right. somewhere else, you got to come back. It's a, it's another four yeah. hours and toll and just, you know, yeah. just show up on time, not early show up on time. <laughs> yeah. Early is not helping me. Yeah, early no. is actually causing issues, <laughs> uh, show up on time. And then, you know, hopefully that hour is enough. And, um, show up with some, like I said, some inspiration picks, et cetera. But yeah, it's appointment based. Um, Elton Lane is appointment based. Most, most, most design yeah, I would say so. appointments, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and uh, basically how it works in the made to measure field is, uh, you know, you pick the fabric, you pick all the details, you, you, you do a fitting and sometimes you put clothes on, sometimes you don't, sometimes you're just measured, sometimes it's both. Uh, and then we make the garment, uh, it ships from wherever it's made, and uh, then we call you in for, for the second fitting. Uh, and it, that's when we do little tweaks and make sure that, you know, your shoulders are 
look yeah. good and there's not too many creases or whatever. The grooms are getting just as mu many fittings as the brides. Uh, hopefully not. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully not. Uh, but the, uh, you know, it is appointment based. I mean, best way is just email. I mean, personally, like if you book appointments with me, it's just Rolando at AltonLane.com because that's where I am currently. Um, but, you know, other than that, it's just, you know, my name's Rolando Roblero, so you just figure out a way, you know. I mean, <laughs> you could do it like really formally, algorithmically, and just uh, go through the website and do all these things, but like, you know, you might not see the time available, or, you know, you're not, you're subject yeah, to the Yeah, they're better computer. off just emailing you direct just so that they can get in here like at yeah. the earliest time. Yeah, it, Rolando at altonia.com, or like just, uh, you know, and then that's how the relationship builds. And uh, if I start designing for, for another company or for myself or whatever it is, uh, then, uh, you know, hopefully by that point, you know, you, you, you trust uh, my style advice and you trust that I know your body. I know that you've been, a co I got to tell you, this is crazy. It's, you don't know things about your body, Lynn, like, <laughs> like it was for guys, I should say, um, specifically. It's like, I fit this one guy, he's like 75 years old, he's a carpenter. And his right arm measured almost four inches longer than his left arm. Wow. And part of it because was because when you get older, you tend to lean. And so you're leaning on one side. So it just appears longer because your shoulder's lower. Um, but his was because he was a carpenter for 40 years. And he's swinging a hammer. And the weight of that hammer at the, at the furthest point extended his arm over 40 years. Oh, my gosh. So he just had a super long arm. You know, but you know, you had shoulder surgery, you had hip surgery, and that's yeah. why these places exist to to fit you in a way that, you know, the 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 template cannot. Yeah, no, and it's also like good quality items. Like, I mean, it, th things like that are just not one size fits all. It's the like we, like we always like women always talk about this. It's like you have to go like go get measured for a bra because, and it ends up, it's not it's not like a cheap thing when you're going to get one, but do you want it to look like it fits you or not? Do you and, want it to fit you? Yeah. yeah. And that's yeah. something that you're wearing every day. So like you should want it to, you know, fit correctly. And it should be the same thing in menswear. You should want to like feel comfortable in whatever you're wearing. I heard wires are out. Is that true? I mean, maybe for some people, but like I wouldn't dare. Really? <laughs> I, I don't think I would tell. Listen, I think if you're smaller on the top go do what you gotta do but like but if you if you're bigger you on the top i think you need that support i i uh, i don't think i would be ready to uh to to take that jump but you know yeah, yeah, yeah. but to each i was own. gonna say take that plunge to take that uh, plunge yeah, <laughs> that is too. not a plunge i'm taking yeah, but, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but i mean to each their own everybody is everybody's different with that but i yeah i i do see that being like a trend um, but you know, much like the sockless trend, it is just not one that I'm into. Look, <laughs> I, I, I just got on the sockless thing, you know, but only with like suede loafers, you know, not with mm. yeah. black leather. It, yeah, no, that's a, nudity that's a, and black leather is, is for its own, uh, <laughs> its own uh, purpose. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, Rolando. First, I want to thank you for coming on the podcast today because this is a lot of fun and I'm sure that I will be seeing you soon at some upcoming, you know, Definitely. bridal uh, fashion week things because that's coming up really soon, October. And is there anything else that we should look out for from you? Anything that... My wife and I, Kelsey, we have a, a YouTube channel called um, Kelsando. K e l s a n d o. Ooh. It's a vlog uh, for like travel and fashion, uh, and we're you know we we met doing stand up comedy. That's cool. Yeah, so she's very she's very very funny, um, and uh, you know just goofy kind of public, you know not like pranks but like just living our lives, but also like entertaining. You know anyway, so uh, that's a that's a good place to to follow. Like we saw Tiesto the other day and. Uh, it was just nuts. Like, <laughs> if you ever want to see like the craziest sh live show, and don't want to go see it in person and experience the three, four days of uh, hearing loss that I experienced afterwards, then watch it. Um, the 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 video. 
Uh, but, or, you know, if you want to make an appointment uh, at Alton Lane with me, it's Rolando, R-O-L-A-N-D-O, at altonlane.com. That's the email. And just email me and say, hey, how you doing, you know? Mention that you saw him on the podcast, obviously. Seriously. Yeah. And just say hi. <laughs> say hi. This yeah. isn't, it doesn't have to be, I'm not a robot, you know? Say, say something. Say, say what you ate for breakfast, you know? And then I'll be like, <laughs> yeah, it sounds good. You, you know, careful with the carbs or whatever. Um, uh, or you just you can go online as well. It gets you, you just get kind of round robin. It just goes to whichever yeah. stylist. Uh, but if you want to work with me specifically, then yeah, uh, email. Um, other than that, you know, I took a break from stand up. I wrote a book um, called. Um, um, it's, it was a working title. What's the name of the new one? Um, basically, it's a journal during the pandemic of what was going on oh, in wow. the world during the pandemic. So it's it's I'm in the editing phase right now, so I'm excited for that to come out. But I'll get back into stand up in like six months. And it's funny that you do stand up because like that was like one of my like dreams like growing up. Really? Mm hmm. But I, listen, it's like still like a little bit of a pipe dream. Not gonna lie. Like you know, we're just like it's like having the podcast is a little bit of like you know giving like putting like one foot out there. Yeah. And. But I was so scared, like, if I, like, do terrible, like, I think I might, like, die of, like, the, like, like, embarrassment. <laughs> and that, and that's where. <laughs> I mean, you know, when you do Stoney, first start stand-up, you know, it's, it's, a ch it's, you're chasing being comfortable. Yeah. And once you feel comfortable, that's when all of the, what you want to say is actually said. You always go up there with a plan to say something, and you could go up there and recite it, like you're reading a book. The audience is not gonna like it because you, you, yeah. you're boring and you're not. There's no energy. Um, but once you get comfortable, then you can memorize and you're not psyched out by this person staring at you right in the eyes. You know <laughs> what I mean? My biggest problem when I started stand up was uh, sour faces. I couldn't stand sour faces. You know, somebody kind of, kind of mad about something. You know, and just and he's not even looking at me. He's just looking in my at, at, at general my general direction. But I took it personally, and that was a hard thing to overcome. Yeah. I'm not quite over it. <laughs> I never will be. I, never, I just want everybody to just, you know, be muted faces or happy. Pissed off faces don't. I, I, can't, I tend, you know why? Because I feel like I'm going to start emulating it, you know, and I don't want anything to do with that. No, yeah. no, no, no. But it's fun. You should try it. Just one it. day, one day. It's like the podcast. Just, just do it. There, just do it, right? Just rip the band it. Don't think too much about it. <laughs> Say something, think, think of a story, you might, something else might come out. <laughs> and then afterward, you know, you might feel self-conscious or whatever, but you definitely feel better. Yeah. You're not going to feel worse. Yeah. I feel like once you do it the first time, then it probably rips the band-aid a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, you know what to expect. Yeah. It's like anything. Well, thank you for coming on the podcast today. Um, for everybody tuning in, um, thank you for listening. As you know, we put out a new episode every single Monday. Um, you can listen to it on any of the podcast platforms, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere that you listen. Or if you want to see in person, you can watch our YouTube channel, The Bride Tender, and you can see this episode in person where you can get a little glimpse of Alton Lane and see me and Rolando. Um, also, go make sure to check out Rolando's uh, YouTube page with his wife, Kelsan. Kelsando. Kelsando. <laughs> Get a little bit like of a glimpse into their comedy and just like, you know, a little glimpse of Rolando so that you can come and work with him over here um, as with him as your stylist. So also for Alton Lane, you can go follow on Instagram at Alton Lane. You get like a little flavor of everything that they offer and all the different locations that they have around the country because there are many. So even though we're here at, you know, one of like the New York flagships, um, if you live outside of New York, there are many other locations that you can check out. If you're not already following me on Instagram, please go follow me at The Bride Tender for all fun facts on the wedding industry, ways to save money on your special day, and of course, hiring the best in the business. Until next week, mix yourself a cocktail, slide into my DMs with questions you want answered on all things weddings. Stay sane, stay healthy, and we'll catch you next week. Bye. Woo! <laughs>